Okay. Uh, okay, guys, we we on air. Uh, everybody who is watching us and is so far probably none. Uh, uh, we will have. I can hear my echo. I don't know for some reason. Uh, so we will have interesting webinar about uh, content gap analysis. Uh, some, some, I do I do have here my uh, echo for some reason. My, do you have the sound? Do you have the link up for the webinar? Just turn the sound down on the link. I, I didn't I didn't get what you said. Honestly. Do you have okay. the, uh, the webinar up on 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 a cab. Turn that, turn that sound down. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, we will figure out everything with the sound. Now, now sounds okay. Our, uh, we are on air, but we have not started it yet. We have not started it yet. Uh, we'll have a little bit of, of, of just just free format conversation uh, with our guests, and let's let's go through the, our guests and the speaker. Okay, so we have uh, John Gibbons from Angular Marketing. He's a speaker. He's a speaker today. How are you doing, John? I'm good. How about yourself? Great, great. Even I can hear my echo. Okay, uh, uh, guests, and with the guests, so, so please, please don't be. Oh, we have another guest, and I have to move. These guests don't don't be upset. I always go from my left to right, so I always do what uh, Google tells me to do. And I guess most of the people do the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Brian, Brian McDowell, uh, and uh, Brian. Uh, Brian, yeah, I don't really know you, so can you introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm, a, I'm an internet marketing, enterprise internet marketing consultant. I, I've been in SEO and digital marketing for about 19 years now. I spend more time on the technical aspects, but know enough about uh, the marketing side to be very dangerous. Um, I have been involved with uh, Angular and John for many months now, and uh, exciting to, uh, to be a part of this. Okay, so uh, you part of Angular Marketing Mafia today? Correct. Yes, I, I work with both Angular and. Angular. Yeah. Okay. We have uh, Trip Hamilton. Trip Hamilton uh, has done one of the first webinars with us. It was a different system, different era, uh, atmosphere. Everything was different, but Trip was was the same. So I can recognize him. Great. He has done a conference with us as well. And well, for me, Trip is like a veteran, veteran with us. Yeah. Okay. So and Trip is from Angular Marketing uh, as our uh, as our speaker. Uh, and we also have one more guest, Robert Sherwood. Robert, a couple of words about about yourself. As yeah, uh, I don't really know you very well. Sure. Um, well, my name is Rob Sherwood. I'm the founder of a company called Oxy Technology. Uh, we are, you know, web development uh, SEO firm uh, located in Triangle, North Carolina, not very far away from Angular. Um, been doing it for you know three, four years now, and I'm happy to be part of this. Okay, great. Uh, we have one more guest, and uh, we. Everyone who, who who is watching us, uh, more or less on a regular basis, uh, I recognize Zara. Zara has done a webinar on semantic uh, writing uh, very recently, very recently. Uh, and uh, Zara is a writer, freelance writer, and, and the ghost writer. She says she's a ghost writer. Zara, are you a ghost or your ghost writer? No, I'm not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but I just started a new project yesterday, um, writing a book with someone who. Has some theories about um, ancient Egyptian scripts, and uh, he's, he's a worker and calculation, but he's not a skilled writer with words, so we're putting it together. So it just depends, you know, like giving a voice to someone's concept and putting it into words. Essentially, what it is. I mean, it's the same thing. Content writing for somebody else is the same thing. You take their voice and put it into words. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, today is. Uh, yeah, I, I still, I still hear this. Um, I'm writing uh, it. 
is is echo. Okay, let's let me try something, and we we'll see how it goes. I I can I yeah okay. So I found who was guilty of echo is Trip Hamilton. So Trip, uh, your microphone is too close to your amplifiers. Why? It's just 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 to notice. Okay, so we won't have echo anymore. So sounds should be should be good. And uh, well, okay, we still we still will will wait for a couple of more minutes, and we'll start. So, so everyone who's uh, stays with us. Don't go anywhere. Just a couple more people. We're, we're waiting for a couple more people. People are usually late, unfortunately. Uh, okay, we have gap analysis, uh, uh, content gap analysis, and I have to admit, I have no idea what it is. Yeah, but well, this is not important. But the important is that John knows what he's talking about, and I hope he does. Uh, I, I I have a license to ask stupid questions and not to know everything. Well, it's impossible not to know. Uh, no, it's impossible to know everything. So yeah, uh, any okay, I, I'm pretty sure Trip uh, Brian and Robert knows what about uh, content gap analysis. Zara, do you know about? It? Do you know what is it? I've just never, I, I know what he's going to be talking about, I've just ne never heard that label before, but that's great. I mean, he gave it a label and now we all will know what it is. I'm pretty sure, sure John, you know what's, what's all about. Uh, what is it, is it going to be SEO, is it content marketing, what is it? Can we put it on a shelf, particular shelf? It's a mixture of both. It, it draws from both pools, both SEO and content marketing. Especially when you look at the products and services that are offered and the content that is on the site to bring everything together. So it draws into both pools, both content marketing and SEO, and it, it's kind of difficult to really put it onto one singular shelf. Yeah, but you will have, uh, I don't know, half an hour or, or more for your presentation, so hopefully you will explain everyone and we have more, more, uh, uh, more. Uh, people join us. Uh, okay, I guess we waited enough. Um, if anyone wants to add anything, no, nothing. Everyone mutes their microphone. Okay, John, it's it's all yours. Okay, let me get this uploaded. Let me switch over so I can share. Okay, I see Anton being shared right now, and. Here we go. All right. So first I will start with the, the main screen. Let me make sure that we're seen. All right, good. So my presentation is about the content gap analysis for wetland conservatories and brought to you by Angular Search Marketing Innovations. Let me close this, it's kind of in the way. So first I will tell you a little bit about myself. I, I'm a senior SEO consultant with Angular. I've been working here for about six years now um, on and off between a couple agencies, two of which have been a Moz recommended search marketing consultant and agency, so I've been very excited about that. I've also worked with a number of hospitals, commercial contractors, e-commerce retailers, and many other verticals. It's kind of the life of an agency. Uh, you, you kind of don't know what's going to be walking in your door, and that's really the exciting part of it. I also have a beautiful wife named Brooke. Uh, we have two dogs and a cat, or two cats and a dog. And in my free time, I love to go out towards the coast. Um, I, I love it out there, and that's kind of the inspiration for this presentation. And we're we're kind of we have we have an exciting uh, I guess future ahead of us here, and uh, I think that we'll bring that out a little bit later. So Angular marketing, I, I wanted to include our logo, and you know. Here's one of the, a little bit about us. We provide industry-leading innovation and search marketing expertise to companies dictated to creating, dedicated to creating a better world. And as I mentioned earlier, we're one of the Moz recommended SEO and consultant agencies, which is outstanding. Uh, it's something that we've been very fortunate to have for the past, uh, I think, five or six years, and it's something that we strive to maintain 
you know, it, it, it's definitely a great honor to be included. And below I've mentioned a couple of the services that we offer, SEO consulting, page search, lead generation, and goal tracking. Uh, that's very important. If you don't have that on your site, I, I highly recommend it. And leading into content management, analytics tracking, and black, uh, backlink cleanup. And that's where we have a trip. So I think that he had his previous presentation on that. So I highly recommend it. If you have any questions about that, I have my contact information at the end of the, the presentation. So feel free to contact us. So first, I want to get into what is a content gap analysis. The process itself highlights how you as a leader in the industry works with your competitors and where you have overlapping features between you and your competitors and where your competitors themselves have content that you're lacking. So areas that they are hitting on that you do not specifically cover. And it's that gap where I want to try and kind of teach everyone how to better target that and really find new strategies and examples for you to build into. And that's kind of really where I'm going to hammer in for this presentation. The, the kind of the steps to go about it and the process for it. First, what you need to do is figure out who your competitors are. So there are a couple ways to do it, and I highly recommend going against who you initially think they are in that just the people you see and, and work with, um, they may be closely related to you, but you may not realize first where you sit as a competitor um, in the local versus global market. Um, this is kind of a, a tall order to take. A lot of people may have bigger aspirations and they may not really understand where they sit at the current state within their vertical. And this is really where you kind of have to boil down A, what do you do? And then B, how well and how visible are you? And this is where one of the pro tips that I mentioned for using SEM Rush's organic competitors search. They have an, an outstanding tool that you can use to really pinpoint who your competitors are, where you stand right now. Um, with all data that, that you look at, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt because it's looking at everything to date. Um, you're looking at past information to try and pave a way towards the future. And you kind of have to be very careful with that because using past data to predict the future can be very risky. Trends change, people change, consumers and markets kind of, they they decide what goes forward and not the numbers you have in a spreadsheet. So with that, you really have to be able to pinpoint where you are and how well you compete. And that's really where you boil down on a local versus a global environment. And you know there are a lot of different strategies for both, but first you kind of have to pinpoint that. And that's very big. That's really why I want to hammer that down. So I'm very passionate about uh, the wetlands and resource management. Um, you know, wetlands and marshes and bogs are throughout the world, and especially in North Carolina, these are one of our our national our, our state gems, and really it, it's a uh, in our case a, a, a national treasure, and it's something that I've seen kind of wane and kind of kind of been uh, clear cut. A lot of the bogs have been and marshes have been drained as civilization kind of pushes out into the wilderness. People want to put strip malls up, put vacation homes out there and the like. And they tend to drain and demolish a lot of these resources. And it's kind of sad. All most of the seafood at one point or another derives food or energy from this area, especially shrimp, 
uh, young fish uh, when they, they begin to spawn. And that's really why I wanted to target on this itself. Now, I didn't realize how difficult it was to actually find a charity that I liked. And, you know, first I had to pinpoint what I wanted to go after. And I decided, you know, I spend a lot of time fishing. I love being outdoors. So the wetlands would be a great thing to target. Now, going into that, you kind of realize how everyone is, I guess, let me restate that. When beginning a search for the industry, you kind of get a snapshot of where the competitors are and how well they kind of present and promote themselves. And this vertical itself, the charity for the wetlands, is not very well established. People have their own little footprint, and then uh, there are big companies out there like ducks.org um, that kind of just dominate the, the space. And that's a little bit more commercialized, and I kind of wanted to move away from that. And I'll get to that later. But it, as an example, for this industry, it, it's a little bit more difficult to go into because there's not a whole lot of established SEO practices in the field, and that's something that I, I think that I can help them with. This is something that I, this choosing wetlands dot, wetlandsinitiative.org is a charity that I found, and just on my own free accord, I wanted to do this for them, and I look forward to, to passing this on down the road. So moving forward, I looked at the competitive space, and I found five individual competitors that I believe that really lined up most clearly with Wetlands Initiative and where they're moving. That's America's Wetlanded, wetlanded.com, balonafriends.org, americawetlandresources.com, and lake and wetland ecosystems.com. So one thing you can do here before diving in is just looking at the competitor domains. Now some of them you can, you can see what this is about, and then there are others that are kind of difficult for you to really pinpoint what they're offering, Bologna Friends in particular. I believe that is a, a town or a city. But they were closely related, and through my research with SEM Rush, I was able to determine that their current keyword phrase, or their current match or search, search results for their terms and content closely, or match, closely match up with America's in, or Wetlands Initiative. And this is where I began to, to kind of dig into the content itself. So going into SEMrush, and feel free to follow along, you can take the domain name, you look for organic research, and then you go down to the bottom. First you need to go to the positions. There are a couple exports in there that will give you different export and CSV options. I want to warn against it, the, the column headers will change, and that can cause an issue later when you're trying to combine uh, information. So here are a couple snapshots that I included. First, you go to the organic research, you add in the domain name, and then you export. Now you do that for each of them and you need to save them or put them in a file because you'll be combining them from six different worksheets into one. And this is where I go into a little bit more detail. You can see that I have Wetlands Initiative and then I have the five other competitors. And it's very important that you label your work. And I know a couple people, um, most people actually don't have computers that can handle the immense amount of work that Excel can put out. I know there have been many times that I've tried to filter an Excel spreadsheet and the computer crashes. It stalls and it just can't handle it. These are one of the projects where you need to make sure that you kind of minimize the file space or the file size and do what you can to kind of allow your computer to keep up with the work you're doing. So 
starting here, you have the, the individual tabs. You copy and paste as values. This is something in, very important. You copy and paste as values to minimize the Excel size. So to explain that a little bit better, when you highlight in the top left corner, there's a little button to highlight the entire sheet. When you copy and paste it, normally you copy and paste every cell. And I don't remember the exact cell or row count, but I think it's 3.8 million. It'll copy every single, every single one of those, including all of the blank cells, which can be an issue. So when you copy and right-click and paste as a value, you only copy and paste individual cells that contain information. Highly recommend it and to use it from here forward. So what I like to do here is once I have the all of them, all of the Excel spreadsheets exported, I like to add a new column just for my own sanity, really, and to add just label the domain. And here, what I like to do is just right-click insert, has a new column, you type in domain, and then I will go and just type out the domain itself, lakeandwetlandecosystems.com. There's a little black box in the bottom right of the cell. You double-click that, and it'll autofill. Highly recommend that, but it's not necessary. So now you have six different cells that are open, or six different spreadsheets. And from here, what you need to do is go ahead and delete, remove the duplicates. Unfortunately, some of the exports are not deduped, and this will save you a headache when you're trying to compare the work between your site and the competitors. So here is a quick example of how you can do it. There are a couple ways, and I'm going to get to the others further down the line. But I like using the exact remove duplicates function within Excel because it's less of a resource hog. And that's you just highlight the cell, you click expand the options, and you have to manually go through and select the column that you want to dedupe. For this one, it's just column A. So once you do that, you can actually see how the competitor sites list out the content and really operate their site. So there's a lot of information that you can derive from this step. And I should have put this as optional, but it's good to know what your competitors are doing and how they structure their own website. And you can look at where they keep their content and depending on the vertical and what you're going after, you can isolate and exclude individual sections of the site so that your content is exactly, it's as close to what you need and you kind of get rid of the noise. Um, I, I highly recommend it, especially for e-commerce websites that sell different products. If you want to sell a pool supply company and they have bounce houses, um, you don't really want bounce houses when you're just looking at pool supplies. So there, there are a couple ways to do it, but for the data set, the data set that I'm using, it's not really necessary. So the next step is you want to remove all of the branded terms for the six sheets because you're not really interested in that. Um, this kind of goes back to not provided, and that's a whole other conversation, possibly for a future webinar. But what you want to do is go into the filter for each of the rows. There is a actual function that you have to click on in the column header. And depending on what version of Excel that you have, I'm using the older one, you actually have to go and look for words that contain and then you go through, look for the branded term, and then I like to highlight it. So here's another example of tricks you can do in Excel to save your time. What I like to do is once you've highlighted the branded terms, you click on the first row. I, I wish I had a little picture here. And then Control-Shift-Down, that'll highlight all of the rows that contain 
the uh, branded term and right click and delete. Now this will also save you time and heartache down the road. When you right click and delete a column or a row or a cell, it will remove it completely from the workbook. And the reason this is important is because if you just press the delete button, you still have a cell, but you've just emptied it. So once you go and expand the entire column to go back to the, the full list, the issue is that you will have gaps in your data. And that can be an extremely infuriating thing to have happen when you try and filter again, and it the, the column will only go down to the first gap. So you can have a third to a half of your work only filterable because you press the delete button versus deleting the row. So if anyone has any questions about that at the end of the, the presentation, please let me know. I'll be happy to go into more detail. The next part is to allow you need to identify where you currently have content on your site that you that overlaps with your competitors. This is existing work that you are currently hitting on, that your competitors are hitting on, and it's something that you should kind of elevate as important information. Think about it. If everyone else is doing it and you're doing it, then it's probably important. So what you do is you take your list and you copy and paste it as value into the bottom of each of the five competitor sheets. And if you exported everything correctly, all of the columns should copy and paste over fairly well. So everything will line up. You'll have a keywords column, a positions column, you'll have the search volume, etc. I think paid search uh, cost per click or average cost. So everything will line up nice and that's awesome because I like it when things work well for me. And moving forward, what you can do is use conditional formatting to find duplicate values. This is one of the things that I was mentioning earlier. Instead of removing the duplicate values, this is a more uh, resource intensive process to use. And what it will do is it will look through the list for the column that you highlight and it will look for a duplicate value and allow you to highlight it. And that itself is a lot of work because it's checking every cell in that column against another cell and it's just running and running and running. So if your computer takes a moment to do all of this, stop clicking the redo button. Um, it'll just cause issues down the line and cause it to freeze. So what you can do is you can go in the sort button, you click the filter within A1 that will allow you to filter all of the headers and you go to sort by color and then you can sort by cell color. I go this one, you can go for red if you choose, that's fine. And what will happen is that will allow you to see all of them and will actually push all of the duplicate keywords up to the top. And I also forgot to mention it helps before you start to filter and sort to sort everything by A to Z so that once you go ahead and filter by color you can see which keywords are replicated or duplicated. So this, you have, you can see the content that is overlapping between your site and your competitor site. Now this is a one-on-one -on -one view and it's important to go ahead and to kind of consider where you're at, both on an individual level and across the board with other competitors, so the industry-wide. And what I like to do is you highlight the red cells back here. Everyone, it should just be a row of red. You click on the, the row itself, let's say two to eight. 
just copy, and then you move it into a new sheet. And you copy and paste as values, which will remove the formatting so that it doesn't show the red and slow your computer down. And you do this for each of your competitor sheets. So you go from competitor 1 to competitor 5, and you copy and paste all of the, the duplicates into a new spreadsheet. So here, you can see between all of your competitors and yourself where you overlap. And that's important, as I mentioned before. But it's, you know, it helps to remove the formatting to kind of speed the process up. So here, what you can do is you can look at what content is overlapped, where it's, content, where it's overlapped, and who overlaps with you. And you can filter by the cell itself column a little bit more in between the gap between the con the competitors and what you have. So this is going into a little bit more detail. So keeping on the same thought process of content you have that your competitors also have, this is what it will look like. And what you can do is search for the duplicates and remove them from the list just so that you see the keywords that overlap and you can have a, a clean sheet itself. Now, once you're done with that, save the sheet until later. Um, you've pretty much derived all information that you can from the overlapping content as it currently exists on your site. So now what you want to do is go back to each of your competitor sheets Let's consider competitor number one. Now, you've already highlighted all of the duplicate keywords that you have. And what you want to do is delete all of the duplicate values. Because you don't want to know where the content overlaps currently. You want to know where it's missing. And that's why it's important to delete here. And before I move forward, I want to check and see if there are any questions. I, I don't see it in mine. Okay. I don't see any. Okay. That's fine. I'll go back to it. Okay. So now, once you've cleared away all of that information, you're still left over with the keywords that your compet you're still left over with your keywords on your competitor lists. And because you created the column G before to list your domain and your competitor's domain, you can select all keywords from your domain and delete the list. And that's awesome because you've cleared all of the noise out of the way. Now what you're left with is a blank spreadsheet with all, only the column headers. What you need to do is go back into column G and select your competitor's keyword and list. Now, now you have the raw data again from your competitor that you do not have on your site. And you want to do this for all of the five competitors. This will allow you to get a good snapshot of the content they have that you do not. Now, you want to find the keyword opportunities. This is what you've been doing all of the work for. You've been gathering the information, you've been trying to work on it, and you're ready to go. So what you want to do is create a new spreadsheet. And you combine all of the data from all of your competitors into one sheet. And by the way, if you haven't been saving during this process, I highly recommend it. Because you don't want to get this far and have your computer crash and do it all over again. It's a headache. You'll likely throw your computer or your mouse, and you won't feel good about yourself afterwards. So pro tip. So once you have all of the information lined up, now it's time to use pivot tables. And what I do is you just you click in column A1, or cell A1, control shift down and over, and that'll highlight all of the data and you go to the insert tab on the top of Excel and you create a pivot table. At this point, 
what you want to do is replicate the row labels and the values to show the URL, the keyword, and the sum of the search volume. This will allow you to derive the individual landing pages that your competitors have and view the keywords associated with those landing pages as well as the search volume for those key terms. That's very valuable. And what you can do beyond that is you can use the same conditional formatting that you use to find the duplicate values by clicking on column A1 or just column A and you can highlight all of the duplicate key terms that your competitors are using that you are not. So that's ultimately what you're trying to find out. And before I, I get too far, I like to derive the overlap between competitors, but it's also important to look at the key terms that individual competitors are using because it's emerging trend. They can be emerging trends. A competitor can be onto it, but no one else in the industry could be. So it's good not to just write off all of the additional information that you have. And from my research and from the pivot tables, these are the key phrases that I have identified as most important and descending and least important. But ultimately, these are the key terms that more than one competitor is using that I am not that has the highest amount of search traffic. So based on past searches, these are the most valuable key terms to look after moving forward. And it's pretty exciting, uh, wetland definition. They don't, they don't hit that. Ecosystems, the types of animals and plants. And so it's important when you're looking through this, A, does it align with and the vision of your company? Is it, are these e-commerce terms, are, are they commercially focused or are they more educational? You, you have to kind of use a little bit of brain power and look through the terms itself and determine how they align with you and your business and your vision moving forward. So the takeaways, you can identify how closely you compete with other businesses. You can highlight the overlapping services and product offerings within your industry. You can identify the services and product offerings currently available within your industry that you do not offer. And you can extract all opportunities, search by URL, key phrase, and past search volume. And ultimately, you can feel confident in your research and begin to create new content. So this is the important part. You can create a content calendar. You can begin writing. You can even identify new services that you haven't even thought about branching into, but your competitors are offering. That can be extremely valuable, and you know it's worth a little bit of time and legwork to get this information because it lets you know where you stand and what you need to do to better compete. So thank you all for joining. Here's some of my information, my Twitter handle, my LinkedIn, and my email address. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions and, or you know, you're more interested in these services. Let me see if anyone has any questions. And I can begin asking questions from, um, from the group. Uh, OK, guys, do we, do we have any, any questions? Uh, Dara, Brian, Trip? Yeah, so this is Brian. Hi, guys. You know, one, one thing that, John, you mentioned I think that was really interesting, you, you've got a wealth of data here when you're doing your gap analysis. And uh, I noticed on your pivot tables, and it just occurred to me one of the things that you could do as well, um, is also take that search position and see where people are ranking organically and look at page one where you're not ranking, where your rank is zero and maybe your top competitors are two or three, and see how many of your competitors are ranking in those in those top positions to go after them that way. But, uh, you know, the process that you just laid out in front of us, I think, gives somebody a, a wealth of information in their toolbox, and there's probably three or four different ways that you can manipulate and play with it. Um, so I, I, I really hope that that people take that away and understand that, hey, um, there's a lot of things that you can do if you if you manipulate and play with the data the way that John just described. Thank you.
Yeah, that's a great example. Actually, uh, <laughs> there's so much information that it once you start kind of diving through it, you don't really realize what you have at the moment until later on. Uh, you you have to stop sharing the screen. Okay, okay. Let me let me yeah, stop. So we can we can Thank see you. you as a way. Yeah, okay. Okay, is yeah. that better? Yeah, yeah, we can see you now. Good, thank you. Guys, do we have do we have more question? Audience, we I don't have question from audience so far. Maybe we will have guys who are watching us who are not inside the webinar room. Uh, if you want to ask questions, use a hyper comment which is just down the down the screen. Uh, yeah, okay. Do we? Have any other questions, Zara? Do you, do you have a question? Comments? I, anything? I don't have any questions, but I have um, I get, it's such a smart idea. It, it is, especially you know when you get the end results of the of the phrases that your competitors are using that are not within your your site at the current time. And of course, what John said, which is, you know, use your brain a little and see if those, you know, things that you want to have on your website. But um, I always like like ideas that spark new ideas, and this is the perfect example of that. Is is that it gives it gives you a chance to rethink what's going on on your website. It isn't just about you know, am I going to make new content on this new keyword phrase? It's it's like really thinking about about your website, what it, how it represents you, and how you can expand on on the phrases that relate to your business because search is so relational now. You know, I mean, here's this. Here's this going through the spreadsheets and putting it all together and having this giant, you know, data, this huge amount of data, and then bringing it down and clearing it out so that what is left is here's the stuff you need to think about. I think that's the key thing of this whole process is is it isn't just a list of key phrases. It's just like here's the stuff you need to think about. Is is this something that's important? for me that I'm really overlooking is this something that all of these people are doing but I'm in a different area so I'm probably not going to use this phrase or concentrate on it or build on it in any way but it's a, any, I think anytime you can think about your business in a new way and get new insights into it that it, it's a very helpful thing because you don't want to stagnate and the way that um, search looks at your business and looks at re relational phrases is so important now. You know, it's more than just having a keyword here and a keyword there. It's like, how do all these things relate um, within any content and how do they all relate with inside the website itself? What is it, what is it telling site visitors about about what you do and what is it telling search engines about what you do? I, I think it's just really brilliant. It was you know I can only copy. I would never like be creative with spreadsheets. That's not my forte, you know. But I I just think that going through this process or you know maybe hiring John to do it for you. Is a is a really is a really great way to uh, do one of those website self checks. You know, who are we? What are we doing? Are we really putting out the right message? Because it works both ways. You know, if you're telling search engines this is this is this is the concept of us. And the search engines then go when somebody makes a query, they say, "Oh, look, you know." This site about wetlands, let's just go with what we had today. This site about wetlands answers your question. And then you've got a new site visitor. 
and then they're looking at all the other things that you have including these new these new concepts that you've brought in from going through this exercise I think it's really brilliant we do have we do questions. have questions yeah yes I see that the question is how do you evaluate if content from competitors is good or bad I mean it can just be filler for empty spaces on their site and you'll be sending you'll be spending your time analyzing it and that's a great question there are a lot of people out there that try and make content for the sake of content to try and trying to drive traffic to your site and this is kind of where, where Zara was, was hitting on um, just because they have content you have to think of new ways to go about it maybe you have the idea for the content but there are ways you can expand on it and you can see it as an opportunity or as somewhere that you just don't want to pursue and that's ultimately what you can use the information to derive from that whether it's worth it whether they're actually a competitor and whether it's something that you really want to be focusing or spending your time on so basically obviously uh, is there I think your microphone is, is, uh, is key uh, basically uh, you, you, the, the content gap analysis won't give you is content good or bad it just just uh, shows you have it or you don't have it basically a good and bad is it's up to you you have to read it and, and uh, uh, is it is it is it a summarize your, your answer yes it, okay right. okay no I'm, I'm I'm asking here stupid questions because well, because I'm allowed. To. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I hope it's it's answer your question, uh, Vyacheslav Matushin. It was his question. If you do have um, follow up question, just don't hesitate. You know how to do it. Uh, it's a uh, it's there. So let's let's see if we do have more questions uh, on on our side. New question. How often would you recommend doing this content gap over analysis? That's a good question. I think that well, it depends on your your industry itself. How often are new trends emerging? Is this more and kind of the the state of your business? Is it at a cash cow uh, state of its life cycle, or is it emerging? Um, are you just starting out and trying to figure out where you you are in the vertical? So it kind of all depends. If you are new and emerging, maybe. Uh, about twice a year um, if you've been established for a while and you've kind of plateaued off then it may be something that you want to do uh, I guess a little bit less often um, so that's a good question I may ask the group see if anyone has any uh, recommendations yeah so I'll, I'll chime in here as well you know I think it's it's also important to follow the trends of search engines themselves and figuring out how your content is actually performing um, we all know that local is growing John had mentioned uh, geo modified uh, search queries earlier in his presentation uh, if it's a possibility that your uh, your niche could become more localized or you have more local players sometimes it's nice to know that and SEMrush will help identify what new national players are, are competing for your brand so you know, I think once a quarter, once every other month, depending on how aggressive your uh, your site may be. Um, but to John's point as well, if it's a if it's an established business that doesn't have a lot of fluidity, uh, you could probably get away with once or twice a year. Thank you. I also see a. Uh, oh, does that answer your question, Zara? Yeah. That yeah, was Kyle Wiggum's question. Okay. Yes, now I see Kyle, he has one. Um, how do you decide which phrase is the one to go after and how do you determine its value? It's a great question. Um, is it solely based on search volume? Um, search volume is one of the ways that you want to go and kind of echoing on, on Brian, he, he kind of mentions on where you are and what services you're offering, where you stand, how competitive is it? Um, or is it a very tough term to go after? Like, is it a short tail term that is going to take a lot of link building to kind of get to rank? That may not be the one. Um, and that's where search volume itself 
would be a bad indicator for that term. Um, you know, sometimes it's inversely related towards, you know, the amount of search volume for it. That, that could be, there's a reason for that. It's just a short tail term that's hard to rank. But you can look at it and determine how you can turn that into a long tail term and determine how closely that relates. So, you know, building on that, it, it kind of comes down to what resources do you have available and how easily does it align with your your services and your products and is it something that will benefit you on the sales side. Okay, I don't know Kyle if it's answered your question. Uh, he's got another question but it was, was already answered. I'll have a look if we do have more comments or questions. And well, so far is yeah, how often you already answer? Yeah, so far we don't have. I don't know, Kyle, if it's answer your question. Guys, do we have more comments or questions? And everybody who's watching us, your questions are well still welcome. We're still here. Uh, okay, we, we usually a uh, uh, typical technical question will is uh, will your uh, slides will be available? Yes, I uh, John? I'll, I'll be happy to share my slides. Yeah, okay, great. Most most of of but yeah, I did have a couple of times when they said, Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same presentation again and again, which <laughs> which that doesn't really yeah, please anybody and, and we didn't have uh, slides, but most of the time yes, slides available. I think we're all asking a question as well. Yes. Rob, I uh, see is there a max number of words you would use to target in a phrase? That's a good question. Long tail terms, um, I'd say about five to seven would be comfortable, but type it in um, and see kind of what traffic you're getting. Uh, most of the phrases, I believe, will be between three, two, and five words. I think five would kind of start getting towards the, uh, the end of the spectrum there. And does that answer your question, Rob? Yeah, we have thank you for Kyle. So the previous question was answered. Uh, Rob, you can use your microphone. Uh, uh, well, if, if you want to, obviously. Does it, does it answer your question? You mute it if you want to use microphone. Oh, you're not muted, but we can't hear you anyway. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, some some technical. You still can can type. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he said he said it's fine. Trip, uh, do you have any any comments? Any any question? Anything? Anything to say? Yeah, actually, I do. Um, I was having a conversation with a friend the other day about um, he controls some social media accounts for his uh, company. He was asking me if he should tweet out an article that his competitor had written that had you know a good amount of traffic it was very topical and related to their industry and we kind of got on the topic of doing that content gap analysis in regards to uh, looking after those uh, opportunities that could be missed so uh, we kind of ended the conversation in that rather than tweeting out the article or you know promoting the article via your own social media account that you should find those articles and write something not necessarily similar but along those same lines that is topical that would provide that traffic to your site rather than pushing it to a competitor's. Um, and I, I just thought that pretty interesting. So if ever you know you find an article out there on a competitor's site, um, it, it's not good to copy it, but there's definitely opportunities where you can write something similar. and get some of that traffic that they're getting as well and hopefully some conversions as well. Uh, generally speaking about content, is content still a king? Uh, because we had, we had uh, Ronald Smith from Moz uh, last, last time and we asked him, is content still a king? And he said, nah, it's, it's not a king. And we had um, uh, Stephen Rayson from Bursum. I said, what's the problem with content marketing? He said, it's just too much of a content everywhere. Uh, well, I would definitely say content is uh, part of the oligarchy 
that is ruling search. So, I mean, it, it's just a full breadth of things that are out there that send signals to Google and other search engines that uh, will tell you whether that content is related or not. Um, I would definitely say the content on the page definitely has to be topical. Um, the keyword that you want should be optimized to a certain percentage, not spammed, um, as they have been in the past. But um, content is definitely still in the in a leadership role, but definitely maybe not king. <laughs> when you said content, I, I think absolutely everyone think about a basically blog article. It's what you meant. You, you, you don't mean uh, video, you don't mean podcast, do you? I mean, content can be any of those things. Um, the transcripts of videos and audio, I mean, a lot of those get views, especially like uh, advertising via Facebook or YouTube or even, you know, commercials on television can get those conversions. And um, even though we can't necessarily quantify a lot of those conversions, at least like, you know, television, but we can quantify paid search, like uh, ads on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's definitely valuable. So content, regardless of, you know, whether it's text, video, audio, I think is definitely worthwhile because you're pushing stuff out there. I mean, there's a human behind, you know, that video or a team of humans that made it. So, and you're trying to reach out to those people and, you know, your potential customer base. So um, content, regardless of its medium, is definitely still valuable. Yeah, I, I'll add to that too, and I, I'll say like multi-stage content, not just your your end game, not just your conversion piece of content, but you need to hit your customers while they're researching your brand, while they're researching the products that you're selling or the services you're selling. You have to hit them early, you have to hit them in the middle, and you have to hit them after sale, post sale, because you need those returning uh, visitors, those returning people coming back. So, uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind is when you're creating content, look at the entire life cycle of the of the customer, the person behind it. So where content is king, I believe our customers are king. The human users who we're selling to, trying to take money from is king, right? Money at the end of the day is what we're all in business for. So, you know, trying to follow that entire revenue path on first click to last click and building content for every click along the way. Okay, we have another question from, uh, okay. Trip, you want to say something? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, we have another question. From audience, Carlo. Carlo asking, uh, John, can you can you handle it? Yes, Kyle. Um, yes. No, it's Carl. It's oh, so Carl, it's right. Carlo. It's in the middle of. Yes, Carlo. What advice do you have for marketing consultants that have to convince clients to spend money to build more pages for more content? How do you justify the extra spend? That's a great question. Uh, so it's my stance that from the beginning um, you kind of want to align yourself with clients that understand the importance of content. And I know that it's kind of uh, ahead of myself here, but moving forward that's something that I highly recommend. But by showing the value added, what I, I like to do is determine how much search volume is potentially out there pinpoint examples where the competitors are using it and talk to how much traffic that they're possibly getting. Really hold up like, hey, hey, here, here's your competitor. They're doing this. You are not. I highly recommend it. And it's something that can branch you into a different service or product. And that, that's about the, the direction that I go. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, Carlo, you can you can uh, follow up this question if you want to, or just it's, you had the answer. Okay, guys, if you, I'll, 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 I'm gonna check again. And who's watching us? It's basically yeah, we've been here for almost one hour, so it's a kind of last questions. If you have questions, shoot. If not, uh, we still can can reach John because John left his email and, and Twitter handle. So uh, what's the best way, John, to reach you? Is it Twitter or wh what? what is it? Direct email would be the best, but I do answer through Twitter. 
so you're old school, yeah. You, you like direct emails because email doesn't go anywhere, and Twitter, yeah, just just, yeah, okay. I can, I can. Yeah, okay. So guys, if you would, uh, if you uh, would have uh, more questions uh, about anything what we will be talking today, you can access John. You can send the email, and you will find his uh, direct email on our web uh, page. Okay, uh, John, thank you very much. It was very interesting. And uh, well, I'm not sure I, I got all the small details where to press, but we have recordings. Yeah, we have recordings for that, and we will have your uh, your slide. Thank you very much. It was very interesting, and uh, thank you, Trip, for recommending John John to us. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all guys for coming here. Uh, thank you, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Trip. Yeah, obviously. Thank you, John. Why well, I'm doing this way because it's on my screen. Google tells me to do this way. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Robert. And obviously, uh, thank you very much, Zara. Uh, always, always nice to see you here again. Okay. Uh, uh, on this note, yeah, I'll, I'll check. I'll check again. Okay, no questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, people say thank you to you. People say thank you to you. And I'm gonna say thank you again. Thank you for. Uh, uh, I have special for Americans. I use awesome webinar, and for Brits, I use brilliant webinar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so thank you for for very interesting webinar, and thank you for uh, for being with us. And you guys, you don't go anywhere. But everyone else, well, well, thank you for being with us. Thank you, and see you again. Um, well, this is Friday. Hopefully, we'll have conference, uh, social media marketing conference. We'll have Eric Enge. And Mark Trapwagen are doing show uh, live show and the same presentation. If you miss this, just 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 you have to kill yourself. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, and goodbye. And you all guys, you can do the same. Mom, I'm on a telly. Thank you guys, but you don't go anywhere. <laughs>